Good morning, and thank you all very much for being here. I'm very appreciative. I want to thank you all for attending this press briefing about the impact on Penn State and Pennsylvania higher education on the budget proposal presented yesterday by Governor Corbett. The cut proposed is believed to be the single largest appropriation cut in the history of American higher education. And it is important that I respond to what can only be described as a devastating vision for public higher education in Pennsylvania. I plan to make some opening observations and then we'll stand for questions from media representatives present on campus. A member of the staff will bring a microphone to you and we ask that you please state your name and the media outlet you represent. I will then take questions via email from media who are not on site, but who are viewing this briefing online. I will attempt to answer as many questions as time permits, hoping to adjourn by 11.15, certainly no later than 11.30. I will remain for a few minutes after that so that members of the broadcast media present can have questions addressed on camera. Abraham Lincoln is weeping today. He is perhaps looking down on the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, wondering if in a single budget proposal we might undo the legacy he created when he signed the Land-Grant Act in 1862, the year Penn State became the first such institution in America. He may be wondering what will happen to the legacy created by the Hatch Act and the Smith-Lever Act that created the nation's agricultural experiment stations and cooperative extension services? I would understand those concerns personally given my own family background. I grew up in a poor family in a neighborhood of working class immigrants on the south side of Chicago. I was the first person in my family to attend college, and indeed the first day that I ever set foot on a college campus was the day I enrolled in freshman orientation at a land-grant university. It was all I could afford, and even then, like the majority of our students today, it was a struggle to make ends meet. But it was possible because our states and our nation choose to invest in our future. We chose to believe that education was the key to personal fulfillment and economic development. Public higher education is not just a private good. It is a public good that benefits all society. It makes our country great, our state prosperous, and our future possible. Where would our nation be without the access and opportunity afforded by public higher education? The near total abandonment of funding for public higher education proposed yesterday signals a fundamental change for the Commonwealth, and I refuse to stand by idly and allow it to happen without protest. Governor Corbett's budget proposal calls for a 52 0.4% reduction in Penn State's appropriation. It represents a decrease of $182 million. This is a devastating number. It is devastating news that could fundamentally change Penn State and our sister institutions in the state and have major negative impacts for the citizens of Pennsylvania and their families. Penn State's appropriation is mostly used to offset the cost of education for Pennsylvania residents. And the direct impact of these cuts would be to undermine the support of in-state tuition for Pennsylvania resident students. The College of Agricultural Sciences would experience a decrease of $29 million of support that enables the network of county extension services in all Pennsylvania counties. It will be a significant blow to the support of agricultural research. 
This would be in addition to the college's share of cuts in the academic operating budget. The Penn State Hershey Medical Center will lose $13.1 million through the elimination of state medical assistance funding and the related loss of federal matching funds. The Pennsylvania College of Technology in Williamsport will see a reduction of $1.4 million. Penn College, as many of you know, is a subsidiary of Penn State. The combined reductions to state-related universities and the Pennsylvania state system of higher education would amount to over $660 million. We believe it to be the largest single one-year reduction to public higher education in this country's history, both in percentage and in dollars. We should not forget that Penn State does not exist just to grind out degrees for undergraduates. Our graduates are the most sought after by corporate recruiters, according to a recent study. Independent economic development analyses show that our universities are the principal engines of progress in the Commonwealth. Penn State contributes $18 billion in direct and indirect economic impact. The return on investment for Pennsylvania is manifold. While we graduate 18,000 students per year at Penn State, we are also the largest producer of graduate degrees, do $800 million a year in research, most of it being brought into our state from outside of the state, including $100 million per year in research partnerships with industry. We are a backup location for state government in an emergency. We run the backup 911 system. We provide hazmat response for the region. We operate scores of service entities that in many other states would be provided by state government. We operate public broadcasting in the region. We own and operate the airport for central Pennsylvania. We are not just disseminators of knowledge, our faculty are the creators of knowledge and have led discoveries that have made it possible to better feed the world, build our roads and highways, make steel, create faster computers, cure disease, and improve the human condition. This cut appears to signal a redefinition of Penn State as the Commonwealth's land-grant institution. Let me ask a simple question. If any community, any community in Pennsylvania, were seeing a business with a bottom line of $182 million that was about to go under, would we allow it to disappear? Or, if Pennsylvania had the opportunity to attract a new company that would have a guaranteed payroll of $182 million, would we allow it to slip away? In one fell swoop, that is what is proposed. That is about what we are to forego. And let me be clear about something. I draw your attention to these charts on either side of me. Penn State has not contributed to the state's budget gap. Penn State's appropriation has remained flat in actual dollars over the last decade, while spending in the state has grown by 41 percent. The appropriation to state-related institutions has, I repeat, not contributed to the budget deficit that Pennsylvania is now facing, not one penny. This budget proposal will force the university to put everything on the table. Such actions in the broadest terms will undoubtedly include significant budget cuts to our academic and administrative units. Yes, that would mean layoffs. And note that Penn State is one of the Commonwealth's largest employers and this cut would, of course, add to unemployment in Pennsylvania. Tuition increases for in-state students, which will push a greater financial burden on, on their family's shoulders, would occur. 
Out-of-state students already pay the full cost of their education. It will undoubtedly push the cost of a Penn State education out of reach for many Pennsylvania families who are already at the maximum level of loans and grants. This calls into serious question the viability of operating a network of 20 undergraduate campuses, with some campus closures a distinct possibility. Over the coming weeks, I will work with our Board of Trustees and our administrative leadership to develop plans to respond to this devastating potential cut. We will fight this vigorously. I will now open it up for questions. Please remember to raise your hand, wait for the microphone, and state your name in the media outlet you represent. We'd like to open this up to members of the media uh, to begin with. Did Penn State receive any type of warning that uh, the university would be facing a cut this large? We received no warning whatsoever, not a single phone call. We were not asked for our advice, opinion, or asked to explain the potential consequences of a cut at any level. Now, let, let me say this. We did not expect that we would receive a budget increase this year. We are very mindful of the situation that our new governor and the Commonwealth face. We have a structural budget uh, deficit of several billion dollars. We fully expected to have to participate in helping Pennsylvania solve that problem. But to remove half of our appropriation and to expect us to be able to pull that off in a matter of weeks, because the new budget begins on July 1st, goes well beyond anything we could have ever imagined. No, we were not consulted. Pat Bolin, WRSC Radio and State College. What is the future of Penn State's status as a state-related university? Is that something that you have to consider and maybe moving towards just being a private school? Well, several years ago, some of you recall, I delivered in a State of the University address uh, uh, a presentation called The Privatization of American Public Higher Education. We have been moving in that direction for some time, and this moves us much more substantially in that direction if we can't get this headed off and turned around. So we have always been quasi-public, quasi-private. Uh, the, the problem for us is that it's not just about the money. It's in our blood. We, we, we were founded in 1855 to become the people's university, to keep the doors of access and opportunity wide open. In our nation before that time, most of higher education was for the elite. It was in private schools. And what we saw in the Morrill Land Grant Act was the opening of the doors to everybody. And it is the single most important thing that has happened in the history of higher education anywhere in the world. It is what has made this country great. And so even if this weren't about the finances, it's about what we believe and what we've always stood for and about the concepts that underlie the existence uh, of this particular university and I dare say the University of Pittsburgh, Temple University, Lincoln University, and the entire state system of higher education. Looking at all of those institutions combined, we serve nearly 300,000 students at any given time in Pennsylvania. Gennaro Armas, Associated Press. Dr. Spanier, do you have any sense uh, at this point, if this cut were to go through, how much of a tuition hike we might be cons you might be looking at? We uh, have a team of administrators who's been meeting in emergency session uh, all day yesterday to try to begin uh, 
to see the range of things we would have to do to, to cope with this. Certainly, uh, there would be a tuition increase and it would be higher than what we were anticipating, but we should be very clear about something. We cannot expect our students or the students who we have offers out to to bear the lion's share of this cut, or I should say the Nittany lion's share uh, of this cut, um, because we already have 80% of our students receiving some level of financial assistance. And now more than 60% of our students have loans as a part of their financial aid package. Everyone would expect, and I think any of our students would expect that under this circumstance, they would have to help us out by accepting some modest tuition increase. But we, uh, we don't know yet what it would be, and we are hopeful that our message will be heard in Harrisburg, and that they will understand the larger picture we're talking about here, and that the members of the legislature in consultation with the governor will moderate we hope moderate substantially the scope of this cut. We are willing to do our fair share, but this is not our fair share. If I can follow up quickly then, who would be bearing the lion's share of the cuts then? We would have to be looking at, uh, at program cuts. Uh, once again, uh, not, not doing salary increases trying to moderate uh, or even cut the increasing costs of employee benefits. We will absolutely have to slow down uh, our ambitions in the area of facilities. Uh, there are literally scores of variables that go into a complex budget for an institution like Penn State. Everything will be put on the table. We will make cuts in virtually every unit at some level, and then we will have millions of dollars of targeted cuts uh, in certain areas that will have to be defined as lower priority. Uh, yesterday, lawmakers said that this will uh, start the conversation between higher institutions of learning and them as they go through with the budget process. Jake Corman, senator from right here in Center County, said that. Uh, how would that discussion go? What kind of points of contention would you go in with? And do you feel as though that you know, they'll take what you say? Will there be a give and a take in that? Well, I, I think we're already being heard. I've had uh, discussions by telephone yesterday with some officials in Harrisburg. Uh, our governmental affairs staff is uh, working very hard, making the rounds, talking to members of the legislature. Uh, they are finding that uh, there's a, a tremendous level of sympathy for our situation. And I don't think anybody in Harrisburg, including the governor, I, I hope, uh, actually wants to see this happen to us. It, it, this, this is not personal. Uh, this is a state that has a serious budget deficit and is trying to cope with it. Uh, but. What I do think is unreasonable is asking any one entity or any one sector to bear a hugely disproportionate share of the cut. And that's what we are saying, and that, that's the message we're delivering, and we hope that there will be a continuing dialogue to uh, see if, if there's a different kind of plan to help the state get to where it needs to be. Uh, okay, uh, we, we have a lot of people watching us from a distance, so what, what I'm going to do now um, to create a little balance here is to uh, take some of the questions that have been coming in via email. Uh, how do you feel the proposed cuts will affect the satellite campuses? Well, the across-the-board components of our cuts will affect every campus and every entity at the university. But if we uh, end up having to make cuts at this level, it will affect the viability of some of our campuses. Do I feel the cuts will have an impact on student safety? 
uh, we would be very reluctant to make cuts in uh, our university police and other things that we do in the area of safety. Uh, they will have to trim their budgets and uh, look for savings just like every other entity on campus, but uh, I don't expect that would be a, a targeted area. One of the great things about this university is that everything considered, it is a pretty safe place and we would want to keep it that way. Do you feel this will have a positive or negative impact on the recruitment of students in state or out of state? We are very fearful that people around Pennsylvania will be hearing about the governor's proposal and assuming that we will lay the burden of these cuts entirely on our students. As I said before, we do not intend to do that. We will have to raise tuition but we do not want to unduly have this impact our, our, our students. So uh, they will share in this situation with us, but uh, we're gonna have to find other ways to come up with uh, the tens of millions of, uh, of, of dollars that we, we shouldn't expect our, our students to, to uh, have to exclusively deal with. But as far as out-of-state students, uh, let me repeat something that I, I just mentioned briefly. Our out-of-state students already pay the full cost of their education. Our appropriation is used for the educational programs of the university to create something historically called in-state tuition, which is a lot less than out-of-state tuition. What the governor's budget does is erode the support for in-state tuition, and that is where a much higher percentage of the increase will, in all fairness, have to occur. We have, at Penn State, 70,000 Pennsylvania resident students out of our 96,000 students. We have 70,000 Pennsylvania residents just at Penn State University across our campuses. This should be devastating news for them. And I, I have to try to understand better what the governor said, it was only a sentence or two in his message yesterday. It was a comment something along the lines of, we believe that the money should follow the students, not be given to the institutions, I think was the implication. If you follow Pennsylvania students, guess where they are? Here. We are receiving this year 120,000 applications for admission. We are the most popular university in the United States. We have 70,000 Pennsylvania resident students. If you want to support those students and have the money follow them, why would someone cut our budget by 50%? There's a little bit of a mystery there and I need to learn more about that. Yes. Uh, Emily Battaglia for the Daily Collegian. Um, does the university have a contingency plan if the funding proposal remains the same? We are working uh, around the clock at developing contingency plans. I can tell you this, Penn State, in my opinion, is managed pretty well and has been historically. And we had contingency plans at many different levels but not in our wildest imagination could we have anticipated a proposal like this. So I must admit to you, we did not have a contingency plan that wiped out half of our appropriation. We are now busy working along those lines, but it will take some doing to get there because that's a pretty tough discussion to, to have. And we have lots of deans, chancellors, campuses, administrative entities, uh, and mandates 
from our state and federal government that we have to deal with. So it is a very complex multivariate equation and we need to be conferring with our board of trustees and with other constituencies as well as having the discussion about those contingency plans with members of the legislature uh, so they can understand the, the implications of going in different directions. Uh, the governor seemed, this is a question, I, I guess I should be saying where these questions come from. Some of those I just asked have come from uh, the Republican Herald. Uh, this one comes from Brad Chrisman, uh, News Director, Radio Pennsylvania in Harrisburg. The governor seemed to be chastising Penn State and other universities for past tuition increases when he mentioned the need for a new model of funding. Is this fair or unfair admonishment? Well, I heard that comment from him in the context of we've been putting more money. I think what he said was we have been increasing the budgets of higher education and they've been increasing tuition and look where it's gotten us. I think he might have been confusing us with another institution because look over here. We have not received any increase in legislative appropriation at Penn State. It has been essentially flat for as many years as you care to go back and look. Now that's in actual dollars. In inflation-adjusted dollars, it's a huge cut. So we have, not only have we not contributed to the state budget deficit, we haven't gotten any more money from the state. And during this period, we've had three mid-year rescissions to boot. So, we have only two sources of income for the university's educational programs, tuition and legislative appropriation. So, of course, our tuition is going to increase if the appropriation remains flat, and of course it's going to increase if the appropriation goes down. But that comment that Mr. Chrisman is, is asking about, I heard as well, and I don't quite under, understand it. I, I don't think it, it, it applies to us. Um, this is a question from Jan Murphy, who, uh, which I think parallels the one I just addressed, uh, saying that yesterday Secretary Tamales made a, a, a similar point. So I, I, I think I've, I've uh, answered that. Uh, how will the Hershey Medical Center, this is from uh, Davis Shaver, uh, uh, Editor-in-Chief Onward State, how would the Hershey Medical Center be affected by the proposed appropriation reduction? Uh, well, as I mentioned, uh, there's a, a cut of over $13 million proposed at the Hershey Medical Center. Uh, what's particularly unfortunate about that is there are federal matching dollars that get uh, uh, tied in to that funding which, which we would lose. Uh, the Hershey Medical Center is a huge and very important enterprise. It is a, a key part of, uh, of, of Penn State. Uh, they uh, provide very advanced medical care for about 800,000 patients a year. Uh, and they, they do significant medical research and their level of support from the state has eroded substantially over the last decade. This was the last remaining piece, and now this would be gone. So uh, medical centers, uh, particularly academic medical centers these days, are operating very close to the margin. And uh, we have not even begun to think about how to compensate for another $13 million loss at the medical center, uh, it makes me very nervous to think about how we could come up with uh, funds at that level because of how tightly we, we are budgeted there. Who are Penn State's key legislative allies on this issue? Where should students be directing their questions and comments? Well, as near as I can tell, everyone in the legislature claims to be a legislative ally of ours. Uh, and what we have received over the last decade is a tremendous amount of moral support from our friends in Harrisburg 
And these are good people who are trying to do the right thing. And as I said, I understand their situation. Uh, I would not single out any legislators in particular, but you know, if you think about it, almost every member of the legislature has a stake in this. We could show any of you a map of where Penn State's current students are from. We can show any of you, we put this in our appropriations materials every year in our request, a map of where all of our alumni are, of where the businesses are that we are collaborating with, the support that we're providing in economic development, in uh, the Pennsylvania Technology Assistance Program, in the Ben Franklin Partnership. I could go on and spend the whole morning listing the entities that we're involved with that reach out to these communities. We have 24 campuses around the state. Almost every legislator has a Penn State campus within driving distance of his or her district. We are, if not the largest, one of a handful of the largest employers in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We write 47,000 paychecks a month. We have employees in all 67 counties of Pennsylvania. Every member of the legislature has a stake in Penn State's budget right now. Adam Smelt, statecollege.com. Dr. Spanier, could you talk a little bit about what you see as the long-term likelihood that Penn State could go private and what the implications of that might be? I think this is a discussion that members of our Board of Trustees are, are going to want to have with us. Uh, we have, as I said before, over time, becoming more and more private. We are, we are doing things that you see historically only major private universities doing. We are in the midst of a major capital fundraising campaign. We go everywhere we can. I'm on the road a lot raising money. To keep on pace for our goal, I have to raise about a million dollars a day. Today I'm not raising it, so I have to make up for it sometime. Um, so we, we are doing what it is logical that a university in our situation would do to cope. And yes, we could go private, but it's not what we want to do. That, I think, is the dilemma for us. What, what we have said in our briefing materials that many of you have seen already is that if this cut were to be adopted, only 4% of Penn State's total operating budget would now be from legislative appropriation. Now, don't misinterpret that. Some people look at that number and say, oh, well, 4%, it's OK, you know, that, that, that's not much to, to be fussing over. But it's more than 10%, the cut is more than 10% of our educational budget. It's 50% of the extension budget. It's 50% of the ag research budget. It's 100% of what was left of the medical center's uh, uh, appropriation. Uh, these are devastating cuts. We are a not-for-profit entity. We, we, we don't make profit and put it in the bank, and we just have to cut down what our shareholders get. We budget every bit of our appropriation right down to the dollar. These cuts are huge for us. And even if we could cope with them, as I said before, we don't want to be a private, a wholly private institution because of our mission. There's a reason why we have an office in every county of Pennsylvania. There's a reason why we have employees through our Cooperative Extension Service in every county of Pennsylvania. There is a reason why we are involved at any given time in collaborative research projects with hundreds of businesses and industries. It is why we operate public broadcasting for the region. It's, it's what we do and what we've always been about. And I think we'd still think of ourselves as a public university if we got down to it being 1% of our budget. But, you know, we're, we're getting into that zone now where you have to question what it means to be a land-grant university, what it means to be a public university. 
people have no idea how heavily dependent the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is on Penn State University. Some of you have some idea, but very few people have the total picture. And I don't think, if they understood it all, that the people of Pennsylvania would want to see us go entirely private. I, I just can't envision it. How are we doing? Uh, more, more questions uh, from email. <clears throat> Do you see any possibility of admission offers? This, uh, more questions from Jan Murphy. You ought to be here, Jan. Do you see any possibility of admissions offers that have been extended to prospective students being rescinded? No. We are not going to rescind any offers. Uh, it's, um, the economics of this are curious. In some states where they are going through budget cuts, although nowhere is it this big, but in some states where they're going through budget cuts, their solution is to rescind admissions offers or to dramatically cut down the number of students coming to their university. It's to downsize the university. And why is that? Because in those states, a much higher portion of their budget is coming from the state to begin with. So without that subsidization, they can't handle those students. Now in our case, Penn State's single largest source of income is tuition. We have to have those students here or we lose our largest source of income. And that is something that critically worries me. And, and that is why we can't raise tuition as high as we would have to if the students bore the total burden of this cut. Because for every hundred or every thousand students we lose, we can tell you what that adds to our cut. The economics of this are very challenging for us because if any students get scared away or can't come back in the fall because of the tuition, if we can't put a financial aid package together for those students and keep them at Penn State, we lose their tuition and there is a multiplying factor for the impact of this proposed cut. So we don't expect to rescind any offers. We want every one of those students here, and we will do what we can to work with them to make it possible for them to graduate. We have every year in our budget planning included an increase in student aid. And as of yesterday afternoon, we still had a modest increase in student aid put in the budget even while every other expense category was being reduced because we have to, it, that's why we exist, is, is, to, is for our students. Should our students start looking for a second or third job? Yes, <laughs> wouldn't hurt. Uh, it, 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 it's a tough situation for some of our students because you, you don't want students to have to go to part-time status by taking on more jobs and therefore extend the length of the time it takes for them to graduate. And I dare say I've heard some thinking floating around state government that public universities should be criticized to the extent that their students don't graduate in precisely four years. That is not good thinking because we have many students who need longer because they're working to put together the finances for their education. Not to mention that we actually have some five-year programs at the university. Not to mention that at Penn State, many of our students finish with two, three baccalaureate degrees. They have internships, co-ops, and other experiences that intentionally extend the time they attend the university. This is all a good thing. This should not be a subject of criticism. It reflects a lack of understanding about the character of universities like ours. And we, by the way, have one of the highest graduation rates 
of any public institution in the country. So don't send that criticism my way. Gennaro. Gennaro Armas, Associated Press. Uh, two quick questions. Do you have any sense of the uh, size and scopes of layoffs that you would be looking at possibly? And then are you operating on uh, uh, any timeline where you have to come up with this contingency, contingency plan? There are some things that are very painful for us to think about. Layoffs, furloughs, eliminating units. We don't want any of those things to happen. In the last, in the budget crisis of a couple of years ago where, where we uh, did not do any pay raises and, and made uh, uh, significant cuts, we, we avoided the concept of, of furloughs, and we did not have any layoffs uh, as a programmatic uh, coping me mechanism. Uh, we've had to have some targeted layoffs in units where their budget is simply eliminated, not even by the university, but by state government. Uh, in, in this coming round, we, we probably will have to do layoffs because you can't take a cut of this magnitude or even a cut of half of this magnitude and retain all the employees that you have. We're a university. We're a very people-intensive business. So about 70, more than 70, 70, 75 percent of a university's budget is in payroll. It's in salary and employee benefits. It's in people. So you can't take a cut of this magnitude and, and uh, keep everybody going. We would try to do it through retirements, attrition, redistribution of where personnel are, uh, and, and hope that the, the scope of the layoffs uh, would, would be moderated. But yes, there, there will have to be some. And uh, that's very difficult. This is one of the worst times in the history of our country uh, to tell uh, an employee and his or her family that they are now unemployed. And uh, that's not, has not been our approach at Penn State in the past, but obviously this kind of thinking puts us in that zone. In terms of coming up with the, uh, the contingency plan and- Well, we, we, will, we will be working uh, pretty diligently uh, every day now until this is resolved to come up with uh, uh, different planning contingencies. We uh, will be working very hard to try and get this turned around in Harrisburg. Uh, I have been in touch numerous times in the last 24 hours with uh, the President at Temple, the Chancellor at Pitt, the uh, Chancellor of the State System of, of Higher Education. We understand we are all in this together. Penn State is not being singled out. Uh, we uh, will do everything we can on that end. We uh, have a Board of Trustees meeting coming up next week. We'll certainly brief the trustees. Uh, they've already been briefed via email, some of them over the phone. Uh, get them ready to help us think through this. Uh, the next budget goes into effect July 1st. Uh, the legislature has not um, uh, concluded a budget on time in, uh, in many, many years. Governor Corbett has vowed to do that, and I believe they will do everything they can to do that, but it still could be May or June, and that means uh, perhaps only a matter of days before the next budget has to be uh, in effect. So. Uh, we will keep working on it and make adjustments day by day as we get more information about where we think we're going to end up. Adam Smelt, statecollege.com. Dr. Spanier, you spoke a little bit about the emphasis that you put on fundraising, and certainly the university has seen some sub substantial and remarkable contributions to For the Future in the, re in, uh, the past 12 months or so. How could this budget cut affect the For the Future campaign? Could fundraising goals be adjusted, and will the university um, change its approach or approach some donors again? Well, we have a, a $2 billion fundraising goal over about seven and a half years. We're uh, about 
60 percent of the way through that campaign, and we've raised about 60 percent of the money. We've passed $1.2 billion. So we're, we're on target. Fortunately, uh, our donors uh, understand the university and how it's evolved, and they believe in us. Uh, I don't think they will back away from us because of this, nor will they give us more. Uh, Ninety-eight percent, more than 98 percent of all gifts to Penn State are restricted. In other words, the donor is giving the money for a specific purpose. We have virtually no donors who give us unrestricted money to make up for budget cuts. Our I've never met a donor yet who said, you know, I understand your utility costs are going up. Here's a million dollars, going to help you pay the utility bill this year. Or to help us with the power plant or custodial services or uh, almost anything else you, you, you could think of. Donors give money to create a margin of excellence for the university, to advance it further and to make it better. One of my challenges is to continue to convince our donors that we will be good stewards of the dollars that they give us, that Penn State will be okay. We will survive this one way or another, but they should not back away from us because they see the state backing away. Most of our donors, as I go around the country talking to them, think that the state contributes much more substantially to Penn State than it does. And that's because they were students here in the 40s, 50s, and 60s when the state did. Uh, it's a real eye-opener for them to, uh, to, to see how it's evolved. But uh, the bottom line is I don't think the campaign gets affected one way or another by this. And certainly, if anything, I'm, I'm going to have to reach out more to our donors and spend more time uh, informing them and connecting with them uh, and, and ask for the help of my deans and, and chancellors and members of the Board of Trustees to go to the places where our alumni and donors are and where the employers are who are going to be hiring our students. Uh, we, we've got to make sure that we, we keep those connections strong. Emily Reddy, WPSU. Um, I'm wondering, you say Penn State should do its, its fair share. I'm wondering what you think a fair share cut would be. Well, something a lot less than 50%. Uh, you look over here and you see where the state budget's gone and how we've been kind of flat and where they're proposing that we be. Uh, I, I don't know what our fair share is, but I can tell you this. Uh, from a cursory look at the state budget that the governor released yesterday, the overall Pennsylvania budget is proposed to be reduced, I think, of 3% or so. I know you did a report on it this morning, which was excellent. Uh, but I, I don't remember if you had the number in there. Maybe it was three point something percent. Um, I'd be very happy if we came out of this with the same level of cut that the rest of the state budget had or other state agencies even. But I don't think there's anything in the budget at, at, at this level. And, and we're, higher education is a very significant part of what, what happened. So I, 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 I wouldn't want to offer anything up or speculate uh, about what, what the right number is for us. The, the legislature will decide that, uh, and we will live with wherever they end up. We just hope and pray that it, they don't end up where uh, this, this graph shows. Let's uh, take maybe one more question. Yes? How are we doing on time? Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll give you the honor of the, the last question. Uh, Steph Davis, WBRE, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, and proud Penn State grad, class of 2010. Just had to say that. Um, <laughs> 
Have you heard any feedback as to why Penn State kind of got hit the hardest? Well, it's not that Penn State got hit the hardest. It's that public higher education as, as a whole got hit the hardest. Uh, Penn State uh, is hit maybe just a little harder because we kind of have everything here, all of the entities that have been cut. We have a college of medicine and an academic health center, and so we bear the burden of that cut. Uh, we have cooperative extension and agricultural research, and we have to bear the burden of that cut. We're the only ones who have that. And then we have the 50% cut on our, what's called the education in general budget. That's the educational operating budget of the university. So for us, it all adds up. We are a little uncertain about the future of the tobacco settlement funds. Something's happened there. I haven't untangled it yet, but we worry about losing those in addition. I can tell you this, that in that budget, that $182 million cut is the number we know about. We now have to get into the thousands of pages of budget and find out what to add to that number on the negative side. What gets added in that we haven't yet discovered are some other pockets of support that currently, that historically Penn State uh, has received. So uh, I don't believe anybody is targeting Penn State per se. It just so happens that w we, it, it's, a, it, it's a perfect storm. It's a confluence of negative forces that, uh, that are ganging up on us uh, altogether. And then l let me just take this one last question from uh, Lancaster Farming. Chris Torres. The $29 million reduction for the College of Agricultural Sciences, how will this cut be applied and how will it impact the future of cooperative extension in the state? The total implication for the College of Agricultural Sciences is larger than $29 million. That's extension and agricultural research. In addition, you have to add in their fair share of all of the other university cuts on the educational side we're way into 30 some million dollars for them if this happens. Our Dean of Agricultural Sciences has a nearly impossible job right now. We are having to make special phone calls to him to make sure he's still breathing. Because this is an unprecedented, unprecedented challenge to agriculture Penn State, uh, uh, the Commonwealth's number one industry. We provide a huge range of services for our state's agricultural industry. There is no way we could continue to operate the Cooperative Extension Service in anything resembling the current fashion if we did that. The idea of a partnership that we have, it's between the federal government, the state government, and county government, has to be rethought. If state government is pulling out of the extension service, what, what, what does that leave for our counties? They haven't backed off one bit on the whole, despite their great challenges. It, it, it is a, it, that is going to be a terrible situation for county commissioners throughout Pennsylvania. How can we operate 67 offices and provide the central support services we do for them here? So for those in agriculture, this, this really should be a, a call to arms. Uh, we need your help to uh, I explain the impact of this. Well, thank you all again very much uh, for being here. I, I truly do uh, appreciate your interest in this proposed funding cut and the welfare of this university. Uh, if any of you have additional questions, you can email us at president at psu.edu. Uh, I or a member of my staff will try to direct your question to, to the right place. Our public information office has staff available for inquiries from the media. Uh, I will not personally be able to address all of those because I'm being kind of inundated with a, a, a lot of different things, but we, we will try to keep you all as well informed as, as we possibly can. As I said, for an, any of you uh, from television who need something on camera separately, 
if uh, in about five minutes you would meet me in one of these corners, uh, I'd be happy to speak with you further. And for those of you uh, viewing from a distance, uh, by satellite or over the web, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for tuning in.